All right, good morning. Let's go over today's trade plan. So in the overnight session, we saw that buyers held ES above the overnight support of 77 to 79. That leaves buyers in control. Heading into the open, we have pre-market support at 77.5 to 79.5. And as long as buyers can hold it above that zone, they can maintain short-term control. And um, following that, if we can break above 81.5 to 82 quarter, which is the prior VPOC and the prior close, then we can target 85 quarter gap and the 88 quarter, 90 quarter initial resistance zone on the upside. So right now we're basically just balancing above uh, the upside movement that we saw yesterday and uh, so far we have maintained and held on to those gains. So uh, you know we don't want to switch our bias and uh, go bearish while we're still in balance uh, because the market could just chop around here, balance in a range, and then it can break out to the upside and hit the initial resistance zone. So until we break pre-market support, you know, we are going to maintain that neutral to bullish bias and uh, look for a upside continuation. In the event of a break and hold below 77.5, um, it would bring the 70.5 to 73 initial support zone into play. The expectation is for responsive buyers to be active there on first test. And uh, given that, you know, bigger picture, buyers have been holding up the market really well, the initial support zone has the potential to shut off the selling and cap the downside. So in the event that we do break off the open and head lower, the initial support zone has potential to be the low of day. And, uh, you know, if we can get a decent buy response at that zone, uh, then, you know, we don't have to go much lower. That could be it. And then we could just balance in a range and head back up towards the 81 half to 82 quarter and potentially 85 quarter and still initial resistance. Um, in the event of a break below 70 half, 64 half to 66 half is the bull bear zone. It's pretty much the last spot that buyers can defend. So, um, you know, the expectation is for buyers to be active there as well if we had head down there. And um, as long as that zone holds, you know, bigger picture, we'll still be stuck in balance. But uh, short term, you know, break below initial support is a sign of weakness. And uh, given that, you know, we're running on relatively light volume, um, you know, we may not get a big range on the day time frame. So if we had lower, you know, we could just stop at initial support, start balancing above it. If we had higher, um, you know, expecting sellers to be active on first test of initial resistance. So it's a very good spot to take profit. As far as shorting that zone goes, um, you know, I do expect rotation there on first test. Uh, but, uh, you know, the target on the downside may not be far enough to uh, justify taking a short there. Or, you know, if you are taking a short, you may want to uh, manage your risk by taking a scale out at you know two two and a half points or three points um, because you may not get a big failure at that zone you know if the other markets are breaking higher then you know in NQ for example if ES uh, continues higher from here in order for NQ to kind of um, you know follow along with it it would have to break above 36.24 and uh, that would be a break above the recent highs and uh, you know, that could trigger some more buying in the S&P. So, you know, the initial resistance zone might just end up being a pause spot or a spot where you get, you know, maybe a three point, three and a half point rotation. And uh, then eventually you go through that zone and up to 94 to 96. So, you know, that scenario is very possible today. Um, in TF, the main upside objective is around 1120 to 1121. We have a major high volume node at 11.21 NTF, and uh, you know so that's the major target. Now, if NQ you know hits its resistance and TF hits 11.21 and ES at the same time is hitting its initial resistance zone, um, then you might get a better response at that zone on the sell side. But if TF blasts through 11.21, um, you know that would confirm buyers in control in that market. You'd be breaking through a major HVN, and uh, that can lead to some decent continuation up towards, uh, you know, 1126 to uh, 1128, and potentially 1131 in TF. Um, 
but you know the volume so far is a bit light so we'll just have to watch the volume heading into the open uh, we'll have to watch the pace of the market you know if it's similar to yesterday where the volumes dropping off and uh, you know the pace is just very slow and choppy uh, then you just want to be more selective on your trade location and uh, you just want to you know focus on taking trades where the reward to risk is very good and you're going to be willing to sit through some chop and some sideways movement in order to uh, capitalize on that trade idea so uh, you know we just have to be aware of the environment and the type of market that we're trading and the type of day uh, you know just to gauge the state of the market essentially so watch the internals um, you know watch the tick watch the pace of the movement right how quickly is price rejecting an area um, you know how's the pace is it moving quickly is it kind of just choppy and slow um, is the volume rising is it maintaining uh, you know a decent level or is it declining if it's declining then you know you can expect a, a repeat of yesterday where we can overall head in one direction um, but uh, it can be in more of a balanced type way or in kind of more of a rotational choppy type way so just be mentally prepared for that too um, in NQ you know at this point we don't really want this breaking much below the uh, 3604 3604 level pretty key in NQ um, 3600 below that and ideally at this point you want to see the market holding above those areas and on the upside you want to see NQ holding above ideally um, you know 3614 to uh, 3617 in order to get some continuation of the upside so for now heading into the open you know our bias is neutral to bullish uh, buyers can maintain control above 77 half to 79 half in the S&P and uh, you know as long as we remain above that level uh, you know the odds favor a upside continuation rather than a uh, you know strong breakdown but uh, in this market because overall we're still stuck in balance uh, you know you still have to be open to a move in either direction so let's just see how strong the buyers are off the open uh, you know we'll see if they're maintaining ES and holding it above 77 half to 79 half that will help us establish the directional bias and we'll take it from there